welcome everybody to Head Kick Audio episode number, let's see where we at, 67. Alright, in the intro, you had Cutthroat Gorgeous, or By the Gods, depending on where you're listening, of course, the outro is always By the Gods, and then Beep the Gear, that's HKA USA, the best damn sports gear on planet Earth, and then, of course, Fix Your, I should have one, right, here, oh, no, he fell? Oh shit. Did he, like, fall, fall? Oh. <laughs> Give me two seconds, guys. I'm gonna leave that in. Uh, my boy, uh, Combat Sports with Rhino. Check that shit out. And I got a surprise for him. Hey, buddy, look at what I'm drinking. Yeah, I'm drinking a Rolling Rock. Mmm. That's for my boy Combat Sports with Rhino. Uh, I'll have his tag displayed right here for y'all to see. So, we only got one fight card to cover, which is awesome. I love one fight card shows. It means I get to take my time. And, uh, of course, we're talking about UFC 254, Khabib versus Gaethje. To unify the lightweight title, Gaethje was your interim title holder. He defeated Tony Ferguson uh, while uh, Khabib was taking some time off and uh, Khabib of course was the undisputed champion and they titles went like this in the main event. But we'll get to that and we'll try to get to some goat talk and some yada yada. But of course you know how we do with the show. We're going to start from the bottom to the top. Where's, okay. So you have early prelims, regular prelims and a main car, right? So, uh, you know, I think I might like invest in contacts or something because you could just catch glare from everywhere in my glasses. Sorry, folks. <laughs> folks. <laughs> Sound like an old ass man. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. In your early prelims, you had Joel Alvarez taking on Alexander Yakovlev, and he gets the arm bar in round run, round one, uh, three minutes in. He had a pretty tight guillotine that he ended up letting go of. Uh, he held on to it for quite some time. And then, you know, not too much later in the round, gets his uh, his arm bar. Okay, if I'm thinking of the right fight. I think it was the right fight. Maybe. Hold on. Maybe there was another fight that had a, a pretty deep guillotine. Anyway, Joel Alvarez, uh, Spaniard, missed weight. Um, so, I don't... I mean, I get it, you know what I mean, the whole quarantine situation, but, like, fuck, come on, man. There's lots of fight. There's m more fighters making weight, obviously, than are missing weight, so I'm not sure you can relate it too much to the quarantine anymore, right? Okay, and then the beast, Miranda, fear the maverick, makes her UFC debut against, uh, Liana Jojo, 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 okay, we know I'm not good with names, right, well, Miranda Maverick, of course, if you want to go uh, to the other videos on this here YouTube channel, if you're viewing it here, I did an interview with Miranda Maverick, which we had problems getting that one put together because we couldn't figure out what platform we were going to use, and she suggested Zoom, and we got it done, now some like the aesthetics of Zoom, uh, one thing I just can't get over is Miranda Maverick is awesome, and the video, just the interview didn't do her justice quality-wise. Um, there was a lot of parts where she was getting cut off, and you know the video uh, quality wasn't there. Just the whole thing was a mess. But nonetheless, we got it done. Of course, it was. I was so happy, so happy. We've been trying to. It for months now, we've been trying to get that thing locked down, and of course, you know, just a couple days before her fight, we were able to get it done. So, Miranda Maverick uh, making her debut. Now, she's also an HKA USA sponsored athlete. It's kind of a big deal, right? Um, she got a win. She got a TKO uh, at the end of round. So, between rounds one and two, she nasted some net. She nasted. She landed some nasty elbows that cut Liana, you know, 
on the fucking bridge of the nose so bad that the doctors are like, nah, nah, we ain't gonna let this fight continue. So Miranda Maverick gets a TKO stoppage. Dude, I'm telling you, like the first, like 30 seconds to a minute were like, okay, girl, like shake it out, you know, get these nerves out. After that, the fight was hers. The fight was hers. There was nothing Leanna was gonna do. Okay, um, she looked absolutely phenomenal. 100% look out for this girl in the flyweight division. Now she's a little bit, I don't know how tall, you know, flyweight gets uh, in the UFC, but she's only like five foot three, maybe five three and a half on a good day. So, like, she's just very, very powerful, very, very powerful. And so dope to see her get a, you know, a win via her, you know, her arms, man. It was fucking awesome. So cool to see. All right. And that was the end of your early prelims. Let's go ahead and get into your regular prelims. Sam Alvey uh, versus Da Un Jung. The <laughs> declared, sorry, I shouldn't laugh at that. Um, it's probably just the way I said it. You know what I mean? Anyway, it was declared a majority, or sorry, a split draw. Eh, I thought Sam Alvey did enough to win, you know, the first two rounds, definitely, for sure. Uh, he was landing more. I get that Jung was pressuring, but, I don't know, first two rounds for me were Alvey, and uh, he did just enough uh, with these new rules, uh, scoring rules, where, you know, he avoided that 10-8 for sure, but I thought Sam Alvey won that fight, okay? It's just me. I, you may have saw it differently, but, you know, this is my show. I'm going to tell you what I, what I think. And I think Sam Alvey won that fight. If you don't like that, we can fight. Or, you know, whatever. All right, I'm going to fuck this one up so bad. Oh, hold on, guys. Yeah, I hear these guys' names on the broadcast. Okay, and unless I'm going to interview them... I don't, like, go back and, like, hear how their names are said. Especially by John Anik. I've said it on this show. John Anik, with his pronunciations, is just the king. I mean, this guy makes sure that he pronounces these guys' names correctly, the way that their mama says it to him. Okay? So, Shavkat Rakimanov defeated Alex Oliveira via guillotine choke in round number one. Now, that was pretty dope. Now, Rakimanov was coming over from... Shit, I forget which organization, but I have a handy-dandy computer in front of me. So, let's see. I don't remember if it was, like, ABC, Dream. Let me see. That's, this is not what I want. This is... Okay. What the... What? This is, this is not the way. This is not the way. Uh, yeah, okay. I guess not. I guess not. Sorry, guys. Well, anyway, he fought in another uh, top-tier organization, undefeated at 12-0, I believe, when he was making his uh, UFC debut here. And he had been slated to make his debut, like, a few times, right? And his original opponent got injured. Alex Oliveira uh, stepped in and got himself choked out. Which, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming. I think I picked Oliver in that fight. That's my bad. See? I win some. I lose most of them. My picks are garbage. You see, nine times out of ten, I pick with, I want this guy to win. And then the other times, I'm like, no. This guy, this guy, he should win. Right? And it always backfires. You gotta think with this plus this, not this. At all. You gotta keep this guy out of here. Burn me in the main event. Anyway, so Hakimov, Hakimanov uh, gets it done. Round one, first round stoppage. Dope shit. Okay, and what was probably the fight of the night? I wanna say, I wanna say the fight of the night, right? Excuse me. Uh, what? What did, what, what, did, what did I pick? Oh, whatever. Uh, okay, let's just 
the clip this one. Okay, so in what I thought was fight of the night, at least for me, was Nathaniel Wood versus uh, Casey Kenny. Casey Kenny, obviously, I'm a homer. He trains out of Tucson, Arizona. Sometimes he'll uh, go to uh, Glendale, uh, get some work at the lab. Let's see. Okay, fine. That that literally tells me fucking nothing. So, fuck that thing. Let's just fucking move on. This was my fight of the night. Uh, Casey Kenny defeating Nathaniel Wood via unanimous decision. Uh, somebody had a 30-27. I think that's kind of nuts. Um, but still a good fight all overall. I really thoroughly enjoyed myself, and the pace of this fight was fucking ridiculous. Um, you know... Credit to Daniel Cormier. He kept saying that only the little guys can keep up this pace. Unless, you know, you're a prime uh, Cain Velasquez. So, always looking to fucking shout out his boy, right? Always looking to shout out. But he's not wrong. I mean, you don't see heavyweights putting on this type of pace. You know what I mean? Light heavyweights for that matter. You know what I mean? I think you'd be hard pressed to find middleweights that could go at that pace. Sorry, I'm smoothing out my shit while I'm talking to you guys. But it's it's something that the little guys are very capable of. You know, there's less body, right? There's less body, so it's easier for their body to get oxygen, you know, to the limbs and stuff. Anyway, great fucking fight. I only had a problem with that 30-27. I thought uh, Nathaniel uh, had, I believe it was the second round. Right? So I think it was the second round that he won. It was the round that it looked like Casey had taken off. Okay, but Casey made the adjustment, started working more of his wrestling in, in the third round, and I think that's what got, got him the decision. Now he, you know, flew back home for a couple weeks, came back out to Fight Island. I mean, he literally has fought twice in just, like, a few weeks span. So good on him. He told the UFC, I want to fucking fight again. I don't want to wait long to do it. They gave him an opportunity, and, you know, he ran with it. So good for Casey Kenny. Now I believe 5-1 and one in the UFC. Dope shit. Nathaniel Wood, look, he doesn't fall too far in my book. You know what I mean? It was a great fight, great performance. I can't wait to see that kid again. Um, you know, just, I don't know. Uh, Taito Ivasa defeats Stefan Struve via knockout in the first round. Uh, 4.59. And uh, I was on the, uh, the Keyboard Warriors show not, not too long ago, actually. And they were talking about uh, how Tuivas uh, knocked him out twice. You know, he knocked him out to finish the fight when he was jumping on the cage. The fucking heel hit him and put him down again. And I guess he's trying to get with commissions or whatever rumors are flying around. And I'm just like, hmm, I hope that's not true. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for uh, Bam Bam, Tai Tuivasa, getting a KO win, saving his UFC career. Using an unorthodox uh, clinch game against a big, tall guy that could literally just fucking wrap your limbs up and or choke you out or whatever. I thought it was a very, very weird game plan, but it paid off nonetheless. He gets a knockout four minutes and 59 seconds in, and that ends your uh, prelims. So that's your prelim main event. Okay, now, to open up your main card, you had a rematch between Magomed Ankle... Ang Ankaliyev, Ankaliyev, uh, versus you, uh, Iwan Kutalaba. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure I'm butchering, butchering both guys' names. I'm even butchering, butchering. How you like them apples? Um, this was a rematch from a fight that was originally declared a TKO win for Ankaliyev, and uh, you know. Uh, Kutilaba was playing possum a little bit, okay, it was part of his game plan, and uh, I don't think that game plan was happening this time around, because this time Kutilaba was out, so uh, good job on Ankaliyev getting the win, I thought Kutilaba was going to come in and be, like, use the pent-up frustration and anger from the last fight and really just come forward and put a barrage together and, 
and put the other dude out, and that just simply was not the case. He had great pressure, but uh, Ankaliyev just, you know, just better. You know what I mean? It's just, he's better. So I think he beats uh, Kutilaba nine times out of ten now, especially after watching the second fight. You know what I mean? So we'll go ahead and move on. That was your uh, main card opener. Lauren Murphy defeated Lilia Shakiro Shakirova? Shakirova. Okay, now it's starting to come back to me. Shakirova. Okay, um, we won't talk about the aesthetics of either woman. We will talk about the fight, and that is all. There were many jokes floating around the table. Uh, on both sides. Not just for one particular girl, but for both girls. But we'll go ahead and keep that out of this one. Uh, Lauren Murphy defeated uh, Shakti Rova via rear naked choke in round number two. I thought it was a great showing from Lauren Murphy. Now, Shakti Rova was taking this fight on short notice as... Murphy was supposed to be taking on Jessica I, who I think got the COVID, okay? Uh, I don't think this is enough to earn Lauren Murphy a title shot. It shouldn't be enough to earn Lauren Murphy a title shot, but we've seen crazier fucking things. Right now, Flyweight is this fucking big with contenders at the fucking, you know, top of the heap. And, you know, I really could see that if Shevchenko steamrolls Maya, I mean, she's got a streak... And she's fucking tough as all hell, right? So, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens, but Lauren Murphy goes home victorious. And she also, uh, I think she sometimes trains at a, maybe she's just not here anymore. I don't know. But she used to train at a lab. Um, but yeah, as far as the women's rankings go, I think you probably um, see, I would like to see her fight that Andrade chick. Okay, Jessica Andrade, I think Lauren Murphy's tough. She can put up with a lot of damage and a lot of uh, whoopings. And she, she can take a, a, a bit of a beating. And I think that, uh, you know, if she watches the Rose Nama Yunus fight and the, uh, and the Ioana fight, you know, I know it's not her style, but she's definitely got the length and she's got, you know, the resiliency to, you know, survive whatever Andrade throws her way, I think that would be like, okay, cool, you beat a former champion, albeit she's not like, you know, been dominating this specific uh, weight class, but, you know, she did come in and beat the number, whatever, we want to just get into that. I'm going to fucking move on, guys. All right, Phil Hawes defeated Jacob Malkoon via knockout in round number one, a whole 18 seconds now. Let me just fill you in, guys. This was the first pay-per-view that I haven't watched live in at least over a year, but it's, I feel it's been longer than that, right? I'm not saying my life is built around pay-per-views, but when there's a pay-per-view going on, I generally don't miss it. I know I missed one for my wedding. I think I missed one. Anyway. And you know what? The one that I missed on my wedding, I've never seen it. It was, uh, I think, Shogun versus Henderson, maybe, was in the main event. Maybe it was just a fight. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. Back to the show. Uh, Phil Hawes. So, oh, oh yeah. The, the reason why I was telling you. Okay, so we were on the, on the back porch, you know, grilling and whatnot, because I had my Halloween party, and I had to work. Same day. So, of course, I wasn't going to get to watch this thing live. Okay? Got it. Right? After fighting with my television and my ESPN account to try and get this thing to fucking work, I finally got it. And so, we're watching the fights, and my, my boss was over. And so, in between fights, he's like, dude, just fast forward. Like, we don't need to watch this shit. I was like, dude, you're totally right. We don't need to watch any of this shit. We just want to fucking watch the fights. So, I'm fast forwarding, fast forwarding. And, of course, you know, I'm stopping intermittently to make sure that we're not missing, like, you know, a fight, right? And so what had happened was, is we fast forwarded it, and they were getting in the cage, and he was just like, just get it to right at the announcement. I'm like, okay, cool. I think uh, the Malcoon guy was walking or something. So, try not to sneeze here. I don't like sneezing. I really don't like sneezing. He has John. He's my best friend. He knows I hate it. Probably ask my wife. She knows I hate it. Don't, don't talk to my wife. Anyway, we fast forward and like he's like just get it to the 
the announcements, right? I'm like, okay, cool. Doot, doot. I just tap, tap, right? Fast forward, play. And the fight was already over. <laughs> the fight was already over. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Tap, tap, rewind, play. And I was just like, well, it was the other guy because the black dude's running around the cage celebrating, okay? We're talking about Phil Halls here. So we watched the fight and literally, like, if you blink, you're going to miss that fight. Phil Hawes is really starting to show what everybody thought he was going to be a couple years ago. There's a bug in here. It's just a moth. We'll be okay. But he's showing that what, why everybody was so excited about him. He's finally starting to show it. So I'm glad to see that he's getting back on track to where his career trajectory was. It's fucking good shit. So that was probably a performance. Oh, I don't think he did get a performance bonus. I don't think he did. We were talking. They were talking about it on the uh, on the keyboard warriors. Anyway, so good shit there. What we got time wise? Killing it. Okay, Alexander Volkov defeated Walt Harris via TKO in round number one. Somebody made a boo boo on that one, so I can't really give you the time they put in. It was. Uh, less than two minutes into round number one, I can tell you that. Somebody put an exclamation point in, as one of the uh, numbers in the time. So, you fucked up, buddy. You fucked up. I'm not going to name the site because I'm not, I'm not a dick like that. No boots. So I can see people fucking trying to zoom in and see the reflection of the screen in my glasses. I know you. I know you. I see you. Anyway, Alexander Volkov, Walt Harris. Uh, really seemed like Walt Harris couldn't really get going. Uh, had a hard time dealing with the length. Uh, Volkov. Volkov's a really fucking savvy striker. Really good on the feet as well as the ground. I mean, let's not, let's not fucking, you know, bullshit a bullshitter here, man. He's, he's a well-rounded mixed martial artist. Um, you know, was a champ for a reason. And, uh, Walt Harris is a big athletic guy who knows how to fight, right? He just knows how to fight but I think once he starts to you know fight these technical dudes like your your Alistair Overeems your Alexander Volkovs I think that's where he starts to fall short now of course what am I doing here I'm going to make sure that uh, he did in fact lose to Alistair Overeem yeah okay cool see I just want to make sure that I'm remembering history correctly but yeah, you know, he's got wins over Sergei Spivak, Andrei Avlovsky, Daniel Spitz, you know what I mean? So, an illegal kick. He's been disqualified. But yeah, he's got wins over, you know what I mean? So, anyway, it was a, I think it was a kick to the body. Like a kick to the belly. And it, the foot, you know, Volkov's feet are probably so big, it probably covers his entire torso. So maybe the fucking, you know, the ball of his foot, or right up where his toe's at, just bink, went right into a rib and cracked something. I don't know. But good shit from Volkov. Real quick, we'll touch on this coming event. Uh, Robert Whitaker defeated Jerry Cannonier. Uh, I'll just put it plain and simple. I'm fucking salty as fuck. Um, not at Robert Whitaker uh, or Cannonier, because it turns out he fucking broke his arm in the first round. So what can you do? Uh, this one's for my dead homie. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Not that kind of beer anyway. It's not a 40 of like oldie or something. I should do that one day. But I'm salty because I really wanted to see Jared Cannonier versus Israel Adesanya. Now I don't. I want to see Jared Cannonier versus another good striker um, because he didn't look how I thought he would against Robert Whitaker. Robert Whitaker was taking a lot of punishment to the legs and, uh, you know, to his credit, didn't really let that affect his game plan very much, but he's a very undersized uh, middleweight. He used to fight welterweight, if you guys remember, all the way back to uh, Ultimate Fighter Smashes and... Uh, you know, his early UFC career where he was uh, not a great welterweight. We'll just, you know, we'll leave it at that. And, uh, you know, I just, 
I really thought Cannoneer was going to be the guy. He's not going to be the guy. At least not right now. At least not right now. So Robert Whitaker, um, I mean, of course he's going to fight somebody in the top five. But uh, I don't think he gets a title shot off of that win. And it's not because, you know, Cannoneer's not a beast because he is. It's just the way the fight have played out. You know what I mean? And it's only a one fight. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. So just go ahead and leave it at that. I'm just bummed that, you know, the Killer Gorilla couldn't get it done. And, you know, take the title away from Stylebender in what would give him, like, super style points. Now, I might go into a little bit of OT for this main event because it deserves more than fucking four minutes of talking. Okay, so Habib Nurmagomedov defeated Justin Gaethje to unify the lightweight title via technical submission, a triangle choke, in round number two, just a minute and a half in. Now, again, Gaethje defeated Tony Ferguson to claim the interim lightweight title. Uh, Habib was taking some time off. I, I am pretty sure there wasn't a suspension. I know his father had recently passed away, um, so that's not good. That's not good at all. And the fact that he was fighting so soon is just, wow. You know what I mean? Um, it just shows you, like, the type of... It's not just a, an athlete. It's like a mindset. You know what I mean? He went in there without his main coach, his main guy, his life guidance teacher. Like, you don't understand what your father or your mother or... You know, maybe you were raised by your grandparents or you were raised by an uncle or or whatever. You know what I mean? Whoever raised you, unless you grew up on the streets, you know, I can't leave those guys out. You know what I mean? But you had somebody to look up to. You know what I mean? That, that one person that you always know you can go to that, you know, will give you the wisdom and the guidance and whatever. You know what I mean? Do I look red? I feel like I look red. I don't know. Anyway, um... Like, it would suck, you know what I mean? I'm lucky, lucky, lucky enough to have both my parents. And I'm not saying that to brag, like, I'm fucking lucky. Not everybody's got their dad or their mom or, you know what I mean? Of course, you lose people along the way. I have, you know what I mean? But, like, that must have been really fucking tough. That must have been really fucking tough. You know, because it's not just your head coach. It's your head coach, it's your best friend, it's your dad, it's all of that, and then you gotta fight without that? Man, well, look, he went in there and fucking absolutely mauled Gagey. Call it what you want. Gagey landed some good leg kicks and he cracked him a couple times. Habib, he took it. Okay, he took it. And after fucking around with Gagey on the feet, for the first round. I don't think there was not one takedown attempt in the first round, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, he decided in the second round, okay, I gave him a chance to beat me. Now I'm going to go give him a chance to not win. And that's what he did. Gaethje did not win. Uh, his wrestling defense, you know, the thing that he claimed was going to be the thing against Khabib, wasn't there. Um, you know, the power and, and the leg kicks and all the things that he said were going to get him to win, like, they just weren't there. And I'm, I'm not saying that Gaethje's a shitty fighter. I'm not. What I'm saying is all the things that he said would bring him victory, they were not in the cage. You know what I mean? His leg kicks were good. He didn't throw a lot of them. He didn't throw a lot of them. Okay, his corner kept telling him eight more. Well, he said four total. And he would have trashed Khabib to like. Now I know he's hyping up a fight. I get it. And you shouldn't take any pre-fight bullshit to heart. But I'm just saying what he said. Okay? So don't shoot the messenger. What I'm saying is... The pressure of Khabib... His goddamn takedowns... And takedown accuracy... And all that shit. He took Gaethje down off a leg kick. He got kicked. And just whoop. He got his foot and was able to get him down and was going to go to an armbar and then switched it up to the triangle choke. And Gaethje's tapping. Okay, you didn't see that one? How about I tap over here? No? You didn't see that one? All right, well, fuck it. I'm going to sleep then. 
Herzog, I believe, was the ref in that one. If I'm wrong, well, fuck me. But I think I remember somebody saying that... Uh... Anyway, they said something about Herzog. Herzog replied, and it was all fine and dandy. I don't know how he missed that one. Herzog's usually a, a pretty, pretty damn good ref. So, I don't know what he thought that was. But it definitely wasn't anything other than tapping. So... Anyways, that being said, you know, off condolences to Khabib's father, Khabib's camp, Khabib himself, like, all that shit. Uh, I didn't know the guy, so, like, it didn't hurt me when he died. I know that sounds insensitive to say, but, you know what I mean? That's the dude's dad, and I'm gonna, I'm you know, give the guy his respect. Now, now we've got the performance out of the way. Khabib retired afterwards. He said he's not going to fight without his dad anymore. I respect that 100%. I got nothing else to say about that. The man retired. So let him retire. I, I really, really... Like, okay, competitive people, you can be competitive, but... Like, when somebody says, yo, I'm done, like, they're fucking done. Right? They're done. They're fucking done. Just leave them the fuck alone. I get you want to be the best. Just be the best after Khabib. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. But, uh, he retires. So now the, the title is vacant. We were talking about it on the, the Keyboard Warriors show. Uh, at Elaw32. Uh, because it was just him. Uh, his Monday night, or Tuesday night I should say. Uh, hangouts where we were talking about this. Um, he thinks, and so do I, really, that's why I asked him, but he thinks that uh, the, the uh, Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor re rematch, if it does come to fruition, is going to be for the vacant title. That would change their 170 plans to 155, though I think they would do it for a title, right? Um, I'm cool with that, I guess. It gets McGregor a title shot coming off of his win over Cowboy, I believe. And, you know, Dustin Poirier, I believe, is like number one or number two. You know what I mean? Behind uh, Gaethje. So, I'm cool with it. I guess. If that's what they want to do, I mean, fuck, that's what they're going to do. There's nothing we can really fucking do about it. However, what I would prefer is this tournament that Steve K... Uh, came up with. That's at Steve K MMA. And he proposed a lightweight tournament uh, eight fighters. Um, I don't remember who all I don't remember the matchups but I remember Paul Felder uh, DuBronx of course uh, Gaethje uh, Michael Chandler Tony Ferguson, Dustin Poirier Conor McGregor, Dan Hooker I'm sorry, I gotta get fucking eat. Duh, I gotta eat, eat from my eye, you know. Um, I'm trying to remember who else was in there. I think there was a couple like wild card fighters like Diego Fiera. Um, I don't know, I don't know, but that's what I would prefer. Even though the UFC doesn't like tournaments, like, fuck it. Now's the time. Your lightweight division is fucking stacked. Do it. I dare you, UFC. Do it. Go talk. So, real quick. Uh, Khabib right now is number one in pound-for-pound pound rankings. John Jones will probably be pound-for-pound pound king once again as soon as he fights and wins. Um, do I think that Khabib is the GOAT? Maybe of the lightweight division, but of uh, MMA overall, that's a tough one because I'm a Jones nut hugger, self proclaimed, and not afraid to say it. Um, but it's tough. It depends on your criteria because if, you know, failing drug tests is part of your criteria, then Jones would automatically be out. But so would Anderson Silva and a lot of other fighters. So, I don't think... I don't know. 
it's tough. If you take out the drug suspensions, or, or sorry, the, the, the popping for whatever, then obviously it's John Jones. I mean, that isn't a question. Um, but if you, if that's one of your, like, things where they can't have failed a drug test, Khabib, DJ, GSP, I think you put any one of those guys in the top, uh, in number one, I don't, I don't care. Um, you know, you know what I mean? So, if drug test is your thing, then obviously John Jones isn't the GOAT to you, right? John Jones is the GOAT. He's the light heavyweight GOAT and just the GOAT of MMA overall, in my opinion. Don't care what your opinion is. I mean, I, I don't care what your opinion is, but I'm open for a debate, right? So if you want to come and talk shit, I'll talk shit with you. I'm not a, you know, a punk-ass bitch. I'll, I'll talk shit with you. But, yeah, I think that's, that's my take. So how far did we go over? Eh, not too bad, not too bad. Thanks for sticking around, you silly motherfuckers. Again, I want to thank uh, the, the guys who made the musics for this thing, the Cut Their Gorgeouses and the By the Gods boys. Okay, uh, HK USA, best damn sports gear on the planet Earth. Uh, of course, you know, they helped me out, we helped them out, it's all good shit. And of course, I shouted out Rhino, I shouted out Steve. I don't think there was any other shout outs on here, so if I missed their tags in the beginning, or whenever I said them, they'll be right here in front, or wherever we put them, I don't, I don't really have control over that shit. But until next time...